This sustainable living program is the first of its kind anywhere. It's a four-year uh, degree program. And the purpose of it is to help the students learn how to design, build, and maintain sustainable communities. So it takes into account not only the technical things like biodiesel or solar energy or wind energy and all of those technical type things, but also the social aspects, also the economic aspects, and even aspects like critical thinking. All of these go together to provide a real sustainable community. And of course, this fits in very well with the overall mission of our university, which is consciousness-based education. It's based on natural law and with our sustainable living program, that is exactly what we're doing. We're going into the deeper values of natural law. When we don't have that connection in our own daily life, through um, uh, that connection to our own essential nature, that, that, that level at which everything is connected, um, then that's the primary sort of environmental problem, and it's an internal one. And in order to, I think in order to effectively address all the external environmental issues that we have, we really need to address that one first. That's the primary one. That, and that's the unique thing that we have at this university, is we have uh, a way daily, it's, it's part of our routine here. The students and the faculty meditate together every day. And then from there, um, uh, we explore, intellectually explore all the different solutions to all of our environmental problems. We started off in the uh, 03, 04 school year with just six students and it's approximately doubled each year since then. We have now approximately between 50 and 60 students. We try to make it as much of a hands-on program as possible. For instance, you can see here students in one class that were doing four separate projects at one time, a biodiesel generator, uh, a wind generator, um, a solar oven, and a solar-powered cart. This was all going on at the same time in one single class. We want uh, a really advanced, new, completely sustainable building, which will give back to the environment in terms of energy, in terms of water. So we want to put all of these characteristics into that one building, a living building. When you look at the overall building, uh, it's more or less square. It's built according to the principles of Maharishi Stapachaved, which takes into account orientation, placement, and proportion. It will be off the grid with respect to electricity, heating, cooling, water, and waste disposal. So it will be a self-sufficient building environmentally. By combining these all into one structure, it becomes a building that teaches. It becomes a building that walks its talk. So the students are in an environment hearing about what this building actually demonstrates. There's a, a veranda on the east and west side and solar panels that you see up here. And most prominently, this monitor that's running east and west uh, right in the very center of the building. The purpose of this monitor is to receive daylight and then have it directed throughout the building. If you look at this, you see here's the monitor and the light comes in the south side of the monitor and some of it hits this reflective panel here and bounces down into the women's restroom right in the center of the building. Some of it also comes through, hits this light shelf and goes into the workshop. Likewise, over here on the south side of the building, some comes through the greenhouse, hits this light shelf, goes up, bounces off the ceiling and comes down into an office here. So we have really good internal daylighting throughout the building, not just in the rooms around the edge. I did some interior artistic renderings of the building, and this is the main classroom. A very large, spacious classroom with lots of windows and daylighting. And this is the central hallway, and this large central area can also be a gallery where students can have environmental artwork. This is the kitchen. And that will be really nice um, for both the Slow Foods course, which is a new course this year, and also for organic agriculture classes. You can pick your stuff right from the greenhouse and cook it up in the kitchen. And also for hosting events or workshops in the building, then we can use the kitchen to cater that. My name is Vincent Batuel, and I'm a recent graduate from the Sustainable Living Program here at MUM. My uh, role in this project is I'm a LEED accredited professional. LEED stands for Leadership in, in, in Energy and Environmental Design. There are four regular levels of LEED certification 
and that is standard silver, gold, and platinum. Now this building itself is going to surpass all the levels of LEED certification. Uh, it's going to be what's called a living building. And a living building is one that gives back more energy than it consumes. It's actually good for the environment. The lead architect for this building is Mike Nicholas of Innovative Design. The reason we chose them is that their company is a leader in sustainable development. And in particular, their speciality has been buildings that teach. They have taught, built hundreds of schools that use and demonstrate these green technologies. We have Mike Nicholas on, on the phone and he will explain his role and involvement in the building and the significance for him. Innovative Design was, was formed in 1977. It's an architectural firm that's focused since that time on sustainable design. Uh, we've now done 4,500 buildings across the country, all of which have incorporated solar energy. The Sustainable Center is very unique in that it addresses energy, water, and waste. Uh, I do not know of a single building on a single campus in the country that will have those three components in it. If you start from the top, uh, we're going to be trying to look at a solar thermal system that will provide space heating, which is obviously kind of important up there, uh, hot water, uh, as well as cooling. The primary focus on, from a lighting standpoint is to provide as much daylighting as we can during the day. We'll look at all the efficient appliances and equipment that we can, and then once we get all of our load down to as, as low as we can, then we will use uh, photovoltaics and wind uh, technology to provide the rest. From a, an energy standpoint, we'll be, we'll be providing more energy back into the grid. Uh, from a waste standpoint and a water standpoint, we're going to be taking the water off of the roof and storing it in, in a, a tank. Once the water is used from the roof, we will use a living machine strategy of treating that waste on site. It's a plant-based strategy, and those plants basically are housing the uh, microorganisms that are uh, gobbling up the nutrients. People need to see these things, to see it's real, and to understand that they can do it today. They don't have to wait 10 years or 20 years. These technologies, they can see them and touch them and feel them. And so this is real, real important for uh, the spreading of this uh, more sustainable approaches around the country. Here's how the financial structure works. The university has provided this site right next to the new student center. The university is soliciting donations to fund the working drawings, the fin to finishing the lot, to providing utilities, and which in this case is the wind turbine, the solar voltaic panels, and the leach field for the living machine. The trustees then put up $300,000 and take out a $500,000 loan. We have committed about $450,000 in material and labor. That together gives us enough money to build the building. So what we need from others that have the same vision that we do and see this building as important and valuable is donation of services, materials, and cash. And so these are the ways that you can support this. So my favorite thing about the Sustainable Living Program at MUM is how it challenges you to think beyond the conventional description of what living sustainably means and uh, renewable energy. It really you have to think of the bigger picture and beyond thinking globally. You have to think of all the connections between the local level and the global level and every scale in between. And I think that's something really unique to this department. That everyone has this same like shared enthusiasm for the environment and for life. And it's such a like diverse group of people, but we share the same passion and it just feels like something's gonna pop and you really feel like these people are gonna make a difference. Our sustainable living program is really at a critical point right now where it has a huge potential for growth and could be the best sustainable living program in the country. And I think this building is what's going to push it over the edge.